You may already have a cool looking blog with awesome content on it, but I'm actually going to show you how you can take it up a notch using front end filters. Follow along because I'm going to show you how I built Backlinko's blog with Thrive Architect and Thrive Theme Builder and how I made it even more user friendly using post list filters that are available inside Thrive Architect. Hi everyone, I'm Tony Lewis with Thrive Themes and I need you real quick to smash that like button for me. Front-end filters is something that a lot of you guys have been asking for uh, for a while now and the least that we deserve is for you to like the video and to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now, some context overview. Backlinko is an amazing resource for anyone looking to learn more about SEO. So we figured, hey, it would be nice to rebuild their blog page and improve it and make it more user-friendly with some Thrive Architect magic. Um, so yeah, let's get to building. All right, folks, before we start playing with front end filters, which is the whole purpose behind this video, let me just give you a quick overview of how I managed to replicate um, Backlinko's blog page with Thrive Architect. So this is kind of like the design that I was going after with a hero section that's made up of a header, then a top section that's essentially there to try to grow my email list. I think this is very smart from Backlinko uh, to try to do. I feel like the blog page in it of itself is a great place for you to try to grow your email list. After all, if people opt in, um, in your blog page, that is people that are legitimately interested in the content that you're putting out there. So it's a great place and a great opportunity for you to try to grow your email list with some really good leads. So uh, once we've taken care of that, we can now focus on the actual post uh, on the actual post list which is simply made up of a simple heading, a three column layout with the author profile picture, uh, the by name and the uh, most recent modified public, uh, well, yeah, the most recent modified date for that particular post, the featured image and uh, some text. Now this text, we're actually going to fully customize down to the pixel using advanced custom fields, which I'm gonna show you in a second. And then we have another three column layout here with um, the number of comments and a call to action to actually read the article. So let me show you how I did this with Thrive Architect real quick. So again, this is simply, I'm editing my blog template um, within Thrive Theme Builder. Um, and if I simply give you a quick bird's eye overview, this is my header, which is uh, made up of two different columns. My left-hand column is simply, um, made up of the logo from Backlinko. And then on my right hand column, I have a navigation menu. Um, I'm using enter as my font, which is the same font that Backlinko is actually using. Really cool thing about enter is that if you're in the tech space, um, it's a really, really clean font. It's easy to read. It's really fun in a way because it's actually, it uses different weights for your bold letters. So you can really create some really nice contrast without having to load more more than one font on your page, right? So for example, for my H tag here, um, I'm using enter, but since it's bolded, I can actually use enter with a weight of 800, uh, which creates this really nice contrast in between, um, oops, let me set that back to 800, in between my H tag and my body text and not having to load more than one font is obviously going to be very beneficial in terms of speed and loading times. Uh, for my top section, again, I'm simply using a, a main heading, a two column layout that's made, making use of my, of my image and then some text. And then here I simply have an opt-in form that connects to my email autoresponder. Um, down below inside the content area here, um, I've got a post list filter that we're going to work with in a second, but I'm going to get rid of it for now. Now inside my block list, what I did is simply I inserted the, uh, the uh, post title at the very top. And then I have a three column layout. Like I said, this is making use of my um, author image that you can find here in the right hand uh, toolbar. Then what I'm doing is something really clever, which is I'm using, I'm kind of merging within the same text element. I'm using regular text and dynamic text. So I have a word here by, this is a simple 
text that you can just type out by this is simple text simple text in my case I'm simply using by because again I'm going to try to um, replicate backlinko's design here and in order to pull in the actual uh, username you can type in whatever text you want to type in so for example by author name and then highlight the word author name and dynamically feed in from your post the author name insert and boom this is going to automatically populate with your author name and I'm doing something quite similar here for the date I'm using updated as my regular text and then for my actual date I simply come here and I do this is my actual date actually this is going to be the last modification date that we did for this particular post so if we come here into post it's not going to be the post actually yes it's going to be the post date but it's not going to be the published date it's going to be the modified date so this is how we kind of get this design and we can kind of pull this closer in and that kind of really looks like the one that backlinko did right awesome then i simply have a content box that's dynamically feeding in the featured image a three column layout here i'm going to make this number bigger probably like 32 maybe yeah that's kind of cool i'm going to make this one smaller cool i'm going to bring it in closer awesome and a call to action here to continue reading the article so this is kind of something very similar to what Back backlinko has right Awesome. Now, the trickiest part is how do we make sure that we can customize down to the pixel whatever content we want to show up or, or that we want to display for each particular post? So how do I modify this text here? Um, because if we simply um, insert the first 100 words or the first 200 words of our article, we don't really have control over what those words are or whether if the teaser content is going to get chopped off in the middle of a sentence or something like that. So what I'm doing in order to kind of achieve what Backlinko is doing here, they always had granular control over the text that they're, that they're putting here. I'm using a plugin, it's called Advanced Custom Fields. It's a free plugin that you can just download from the WordPress directory of plugins. And once you come in here and you add a new custom field, you're going to add a new field type that's uh, of type text area. Give it a field label, a field name, and insert a default value. All of these is kind of uh, irrelevant. You, you can do whatever you want there. I'm doing blog teaser content. And if you scroll down to the very bottom um, into the behavioral rules, just make sure that it shows up um, in all of your posts. So if post type is equal to post, then simply save your changes and what we're going to do now is we're going to head back over to our list of posts and if we go inside the back end of one of one of our posts we're going to see that that custom field that we just created is showing up towards the bottom and we can now insert as many paragraphs as we want now whatever we put in here is what's going to show up in the um in the front end of our blog list of our blog list and we have to do this for each particular post. So every time you're working on a blog post, just don't forget to um, to come into the back end of your post and modify your teaser content. Now, how do we tell Thrive, okay, I wanna make sure that you're uh, displaying the teaser content. Well, simply you can, I'm gonna delete this for now for the sake of testing. Simply type in, um, or actually insert uh, some text and dynamically feed it in a custom field, which is going to be, in my case, a blog teaser content. And boom, my content for this particular post is showing up here. And I have complete granular control over the text that's, uh, that's being displayed here. So this is how you kind of build Backlinko's blog list. It's kind of clean, it's really nice. Um, I really like it. There's only one thing that I actually think I improved upon their original design, which is that they have too much breathing room, in my opinion. Um, if you take a closer look, and don't take me wrong, I, I am a huge fan of breathing room and internal paddings. If you've watched um, 
my previous videos, you know that I'm a huge fan of making sure that we're using internal paddings and margins to create breathing room so that our pages look nice and clean. But I think this is a little bit too much, mainly because if we go inside responsive mode, here you can kind of see how um, on smaller screen sizes, we're not letting people see any of our content uh, without forcing them to scroll. Um, I'm not a huge fan of this. I like teasing a little bit of value above the fold. If all, the only thing my visitors can see is an opt-in form to opt-in, I don't even know what I'm really opting in for. Like I, I you know, I'm forcing to to um, have. I'm forcing my visitors to have to scroll in order to actually see the type of content that I'm creating, which is not ideal. So the way I fix this is simply by um, not creating as much breathing room. Um, there's enough breathing room. There's about 20 pixels in between these elements, but um, I'm not creating humongous breathing room to the point where people are not going to be able to see my my first uh, heading for my first post. Now, how do we make this even better? Well, here's the thing. If we go back to Backlinko, there's one main problem that I see with this blog, um, which is that I can't really filter content in any way, shape, or form. If I want to come in here and look for content about something in particular, I can't. I mean, the only thing I can do is scroll, 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 keep on scrolling, try to navigate through older blog posts um, and do this until I pretty much get bored or get tired, right? So this is not ideal. How do we take this up to the next? How do we take this up a notch? How do we take this to the next level? Well, with front-end filters, we can actually take this um, and make it much, much, much more user-friendly. So let's actually do that. So let's insert filters, a post list filter above my above my blog list. And here um, I've created some um, categories that I thought could make sense for this particular blog style. So I have a category for video in terms of, you know, if you want to learn about SEO um, for video content, or if you want to learn about schema, or maybe you want to let people filter by ranking, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come inside the, well, actually first we need to be able to see our filters. So you can have these filters be buttons. In my case, I think for this particular scenario, it would make sense for us to use checkboxes. Um, it's a very kind of neat way of organizing things into more than one category if our, if our readers want to, to see or browse through more than one category. So uh, we're going to make sure that we do allow this multiple selections here option to be enabled. And as a filter option, we're going to be using categories. You could use tags or you if you have WooCommerce installed, you could even power through um, pro product categories. In my case, I think it makes sense for us to just use the traditional WordPress categories. Categories are a great phenomenal way of organizing content inside our website. So I'm going to power through with categories. Now we need to make sure that the categories are actually the ones that we want to use. So in my case, I'm going to be doing uh, content marketing. I'm going to be doing uh, ranking. If people want to browse through content about how to rank content in the search engines schema and I'll be doing video video SEO as well. Great. So I got all of my categories here. Um, I'm going to have them be horizontal and the query key is going to be category. The label for all is going to be select all or just all, you know, that works as well. Layout options. I'm going to center this and boom. This is already a much neater way of organizing content um, or, or of improving the user experience, at least on the blog page, right? Because now we, we're not forcing people to scroll through a bunch of different content or forcing them to go through 25 different pages to find the category or the, the content categories that they really want to browse through. So this is great. Um, I think from an aesthetics aesthetics uh, standpoint, I would probably want a little bit more horizontal space in between options. But other than that, this is looking pretty neat. Um, now, we do need to make sure that this um, post list uh, is properly connected to our filter. So we're going to make sure that um, the 
allow front end filters is enabled and uh, set to category. I don't need any other additional rules as of right now. I'm happy with these and boom. Now we've already properly connected this um, filter to our post list and people can pick and choose from what types of categories they wish to browse through. If for some reason you end up with a site that has 25 gazillion different options to pick and choose from, I would probably at that point do a two column layout where we have our blog list in the right hand column, our filter in the left hand column. And instead of doing horizontal filters, we would do vertical filters and boom. Um, here is our two column navigation, right? Now, in order to actually preserve the backlink go layout, we, that's probably not gonna work. We can probably make this much thinner. This would still, in a way, it's, it would still work, right? We could technically speaking have the filtering options in our sidebar if we wanted to have a legitimate sidebar. Uh, we could just drag and drop the filtering options into our sidebar and have them here. Um, and we could continue to build upon our sidebar. That would work as well. Uh, but anyways, that is it in terms of applying filterings to the Backlinko SEO blog page. Cool, so hopefully you like the overview of Backlinko's blog page and how we took it up a notch with front-end filters. You can get really fancy with front-end filters and in the future, we'll show you how to build even more robust directories with this awesome new element inside Thrive Architect. Now, before I let you go, there is a link down below in the description box. It's gonna take you to a page where you can learn more about Thrive Architect and Thrive Theme Builder. These are the two tools that you've seen me use during this video and that you probably want to use to build your own blog and your own website. That's it for today's video. I'm Tony Lewis with Thrive Themes and I will see you guys in the next one. Cheers. <laughs>